you know, there's two things I've learned in shooting this episode. And number one is this. Don't borrow a car from someone who says, yeah, it drives okay, except it may need a tune-up. Especially, especially when you have the money for a rental car. And number two, don't get lost in Alaska when your cell phone loses service and you're driving a car that needs a tune-up. Well, other than that, losing my luggage, my trip to this, the 49th state on its 50th anniversary, it was both surprising and predictable. I did expect to see incredible views in every direction, SUVs, log cabins, maybe an occasional moose. The way I imagined its towns and city pretty much matched the way it looked in my mind, including those Oh, well, summer markets and festivals where people meet and greet and sell their local goods. But I think what surprised me were the little things, like the flowers. They seemed to punch through the landscape everywhere, bursting forth, welcoming me, as well as the buzzing sound above of all those little airplanes flying in the short summer season. And then there was the fishing. Of course, yeah, you expect to see it, but unless you want to go pretty far out of town, let me just put it this way, you're not going to be lonely. Alaska. As every third grader knows, Alaska is the largest state in America. And if you try to sum it up in two minutes with a limited point of view like I'm doing right now, well, you could invite the hostile reaction from the locals. Alaskans live in this rugged harmony with their majestic environment. The mountains, the glaciers, those lonely lakes and hidden streams everywhere. And it even seems that their dogs refuse any sort of pampered, city-fied treatment. Well, you could say at least most do. Hey, 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 this is Greg. I'm looking a little rough because I am in the wilds of Alaska. Thanks for joining me today on The Dog Soup. We're going to start off with a bunch of short clips, the first one being with a vocal coach with a lot of personality and her long hair chihuahua. start growling at the TV and I'm like, what? It was Debbie Gibson with that round hat on. He doesn't like hats. Give me five. Give me five. <coughs> His name is Don Juan DeMarco. So I thought he looked like Johnny Depp and Don Juan DeMarco. When I first got him, he had a stripe all the way from the tip of his nose down to the tip of his tail. And his tail didn't have all this fur. He grew, grew this later. I thought he looked like a chipmunk. Sunglasses drive him crazy. But once he gets to know you, he will love you to pieces. You are his. And he'll get upset if you don't acknowledge it when you, when you walk in. When he's around other dogs, he goes right up to them and growls and barks and checks them out right away. And he is in charge no matter how big. But he sings along with my students. He plays piano. He sings on pitch. Are you going to be able to show me that? seemed to be hanging around their house except nobody was feeding it. It was in the garbage. He said, oh, mister, that's a bum dog. Nobody wants that dog. That's not our dog. You know. And so I took it in. But it howls like a husky, but it's very intense in terms of like its focus. Mm -hmm. And um, it, I think it's got some, um, what do you call it, um, border collie in it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, because she's very smart. But one of the greatest dogs I've ever owned, really. He just loves fishing, though. 
you, you'd love what the dog does <laughs> because the dog, when I get a fish hunt, will actually uh -huh. jump right in the water and like on the first jump and get him. Wow. Big Lake resident Becca Charles was a dog musher at one point who owned 100 sled dogs. And I said, well, how did you choose your favorite out of all those? And she really wouldn't tell me. But during the whole course of the time I spent with her there, it was fun, but there was something compelling and there was something just a little different about her. And so after the interview, she finally admitted to me that, yes, indeed, she was and had been a hippie. I'm originally from Massachusetts. And I moved up to Alaska about, oh, five years ago so that I could mush my sled dogs that I had in college. And ended up signing up for Iditarod, never completed it, um, uh, retired from dog mushing. And now I just live with my boy Chuck in Crosby and my husband Randy. So I got him at four weeks, very young, and I raised him with another litter of puppies that we had. And so basically, he, he came in the house more often, but he was basically a sled dog from his puppyhood. This is Crosby. He's just over a year old now. We got him around Thanksgiving of last year, and he's a boxer and kind of a wimp. Ended up coming up to Alaska on a whim, just wanted to come up and experience the real wilderness. Well, I lived on a glacier for one season with all my dogs um, and that was a blast so we got choppered up we'd stay up for about a week and then I'd go back down for a shower and you know some groceries and come back up the dogs would stay up there all season having the sled dogs was such an amazing experience I mean I literally had between 35 and over 100 dogs at one time I've gained 50 pounds since I stopped dog mushing and I only weigh like 145 right now when you have that many dogs you try not to have a favorite but you end up having them because you have those special lead dogs that have gotten you through those situations. For instance, one time I, uh, I was running a 300 mile race outside of Fairbanks and we got to the top of what's called Eagle Summit. And this is a year where you go down the steep side of Eagle Summit. When you're running sled dogs, they're not very controllable going downhill. And I lost my dog team and they just went barreling down the hill without me. And I called Woe twice and my lead dog Candic stopped the whole team on that downhill. Wow. And so she was definitely one of my favorites, I guess I have to break down and say it. But typically you treat everybody equally, like none of the dogs gets better treatment than the other because they can see that. Those dogs are doing so much for you and you have to do so much for them. It would be such a waste to have to go out and scoop poop every day and feed them every day and never get, and never get any um, enjoyment from it. Uh -huh. The bond that you make with those dogs is so far above and beyond any bond that you could ever make with with pets, even with me and Chuck. I mean, we're best friends, but those sled dogs, you are literally putting your life in their paws. Okay. Ready? Okay. Hop. <laughs> Bye. Bye.